A notebook, a pen, and your mind. Probably the most powerful weapon you can ever bring to the table of life. Uh, reason I say that, had a really cool experience this morning, uh, just doing some, uh, just some writing and some, uh, getting some clarity. Um, if you're someone like me who is um, seeking clarity in your life right now, where you want to know how, you know, what's the best way for me to show up? Like, what are my natural uh, passions and talents and gifts? Like the gifts to the world, the way that you, that people, the things people love about you, how you show up, and how do you channel those things into purpose, into direction? Whether it be choosing the right job or starting the right business, or doing something that just lights you up and inspires you, no matter how crazy it sounds. Um, I was reading uh, the book uh, Think and Grow Rich this morning, which is one of my favorite books in the world. If you haven't read it, get the book, read it. It's, uh, it's so empowering. And he talks about in there, um, the author's name is Napoleon Hill, he talks about uh, creating what's called your definiteness of purpose. And I set out with the intention of doing that exercise, which is one where you define you know, what the hell it is you want in life and how you're going to get it. So, but, but, but before I could even answer that question, um, even though I know I do have some clarity now, I just but I wanted to say, well, what comes before that? And I started just writing some things out, and it ended up coming up with this really simple three-part little exercise. You make three lists, and these three lists, when you when you add them up, three lists about yourself together, they create like a, a picture of who you are. And for me, it gave me clarity in how I can show up. So. I just was so excited about it. I want to get on camera and I wanted to share it with you. And if you feel uh, like, hey, this is something you like to do, then I'm going to put the uh, questions or uh, how to do the list like in the description below and um, totally try it and do it. And I think you'll have the same results I did. Uh, the first thing I did is I listed what my aptitudes are. And aptitudes are going to be things that you know you're naturally good at. I mean, it's kind of like your, your inborn talents or gifts, whatever you might want to call them. You could be a good singer, good at math. Uh, whatever it might be. For me, uh, my list of aptitudes, I'll share them with you. Uh, I'm a natural psychologist, not trained. I'm just, I just understand how people think and have always been kind of fascinated by that. Uh, I have what I refer to as this kind of lockpick problem solving mentality. Uh, it's like, don't tell me that something can't be done. Like there's a way, right? There is a way. Uh, I, can, I tend to make uh, difficult things seem simple for others. I can explain it to them in a way that they can see, understand, and then apply. Um, I tend to be a very good listener. I'm often on the listening end of phone calls when, when friends you know, need to open up and share, uh, which ties right into my um, empathy because I think they do that because they feel that I actually do care. Um, I tend to be quite inventive and, and experimental. Uh, I'm a fast learner. And probably my, my biggest aptitudes and my strongest points is that I have a understanding of big picture concepts kind of like if you were to fly in an airplane and look down and for the first time and see your neighborhood or or uh, your city and you see the grid and how everything fits together from a new perspective that there's just no way you could appreciate or understand unless you're from that view my mind is always seeking that big picture perspective because I think decisions can be uh, made uh, more efficiently and better from that perspective um, I tend to use knowledge to ease uh, fear, anxiety, and uncertainty. I think knowledge is power. Uh, like like G.I. Joe said, uh, knowing is half the battle. Yes, I'm that old. All right. <laughs> uh, so the second thing I did after listing aptitudes, and this is where it gets really interesting because what I'm about to show you is when you make this next list, it has a, a really unexpected way of tying into the previous one. Uh, so. I listed what are called specialized knowledge. And so these are things that you have been trained in in life. Like maybe your job has taught you a certain skill set or you've learned a sport or you have a, a specific skill um, that, uh, I'll just list what some of mine are. Uh, website design, uh, photography, videography, music, singing, like playing guitar, uh, politics, marketing, search engine optimization, sales copy, and general like how to type things. Um, so here's what I found fascinating when I got to this part, because whenever you take your specialized knowledge, like a lot of times we focus on these skill sets and we think that that's what we offer to the world. And the reality is that it's not. And here's why. I realized that if I take something I like to do, like for example, let's say photography. Now photography is something that I don't uh, do as a business, 
um, but I like to just do kind of to pleasure my, you know, to enjoy uh, for myself. And there's another aspect of it I like, which is actually teaching other people or showing them how to do it. I, there's, an, there's something enjoyable about the process of showing someone how to get like maybe a really cool result. Um, I even have a course I'm thinking about creating, teach people how to use mobile phones to teach, te take uh, amazing photographs uh, and edit them for free. So if I take any of my specialized knowledge uh, skill sets, what I realize is the way I show up to the world is through the filter of my aptitudes. I can take any one of these, like the photography, and realize that, hey, I can make difficult things seem simple for others to see, understand, and apply. That's why when it comes to photography, I have that aspect of enjoying the teaching aspect of it. You think it's difficult? It was hard to get this amazing photograph? No, it wasn't. Actually, let me show you a simple process for doing it that anyone can do. I love doing that. Um, same for videography, uh, music and singing. I actually sing more for myself and I don't share as much as I should. It's one of my areas I want to challenge myself, but I enjoy showing someone how to maybe play the guitar and come and learn how to sing with me. It's fun, it empowers me, and I learn more in, that, in the process of teaching than, than uh, even learning. Um, so marketing, for example, or building a website for a client, I go back to my aptitudes, that big picture mentality is where I will come in and look and say, hey, there's the big picture, and this is why you need to make certain decisions about your website. So my actual value to my client is not the fact that I'm building them a website, but that I have a big picture perspective that is, that is positioning me as an expert because I know how to avoid pitfalls and dangers and stop them from wasting money and, the, and all these benefits just because of that one aptitude I have, which is my big picture mentality. So that's something that specifically shows up in my business model. I never even real. I've never made these connections here. So uh, maybe they're obvious to you, but to me they weren't. And it was really cool to do this. So that's kind of what I want to share. I'm inviting you if you want to try this. This is really cool. Um, the third list I made was uh, just a list of what my core philosophies in life are. And these philosophies are going to be your like your worldview, how you see the world, what you might call it your reality. Um, and these are important because this determines a lot of things. Uh, so for me, like I have a very strong sense of justice and liberty, which affects my political views. Um, I never give up. Uh, I, I believe in, in a philosophy of like never giving up. There's always a solution. Remember, I have the aptitude for that lock picking mentality of like there's always a way to get around it. it can get you in trouble if you're not careful. Um, <laughs> I tend to believe in having a balanced approach to everything. Like having balance in things is important. And that uh, and leads into the next one, which is doing what's what I call heart-centered living. And heart-centered living is like even if you believe in chakras, root chakra, spiritual, it all meets at the heart. Yin and yang, everything there there is intention. The intention is for there to be balance. To me, that is the big picture in life. When you when you strike that balance, you're able to make better decisions. Um, so if the cool thing about doing this exercise is that the unexpected thing for me is like I feel actually motivated. I'm getting clarity on what I, how I want to show up, how I want to change, what changes I want to make in my business, what products I might want to create. Um, for you, it could be like the same thing, or maybe you want to write a book, or there's some class you want to take that you've never taken. You know you want to do it, or maybe there's another job that would actually make you happier. By doing this, you're going to discover like what that is and what your gift to the world is. I think if you can know what your gift to the world is and you can show up that way, like it's the formula for happiness because you're going to have people are going to show up and offer you gratitude and you're going to express gratitude. And it is scientifically proven, Google it, it is scientifically proven that the emotion of gratitude is the true source of happiness in our biology and in our spirituality as humans. Um, and that's it. I just wanted to share this. So I'll put uh, what I have here. Um, below in the in the in the uh, description if you have any comments, please leave them I'd love to hear any feedback and maybe your experiences doing this as well um, Thank you for your time and I'll see you again next time